Panorama TV presents How They Do That, where we explore the world of professional photographers and share their techniques with you. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Hey everybody, welcome to this week's episode of How'd They Do That? On the show this week, we have Tamara Lackey. Thank you so much for joining us today, Tamara. Thanks for inviting me. Well, we have a lot to talk about. In fact, let me talk a little bit about who you are so people will know. Tamara has been featured in magazines all over the place. She's been in Rangefinder Magazine, Professional Photographer Magazine, Image Maker Magazine. Her work has been shown in Vogue, O Magazine, Town & Country, uh, Inside Weddings, Parenting Magazine. I mean, she's been everywhere. And in addition to that, she has a lot of her work has been shown on some TV shows. She's been shown on the Martha Stewart Show. Her work has been featured in uh, ABC's Extreme Makeover Home Edition. And uh, uh, as a bonus, she also has some books and DVDs. She has a book called The Art of Children's Portrait Photography. And she has a DVD called Inside Contemporary Children's Photography. And recently, she was featured in a three-day live show on Creative Live. And she's done a lot more than that, actually, but we just it'll take me forever to go through everything she's done. But that is Tamara Lackey. So again, Tamara, thank you so much for being here on the show today. There's one thing that I noticed so much about you that is uh, just inspiring, and that is that you do a lot of giving back. I mean, you do a lot of teaching. You uh, give back to the photography community. So... Um, is, is that something that is sort of uh, one of your core beliefs or something that you really love to do? Why do you do so much uh, teaching and giving back to photographers? Yeah, I mean, I think we have a relatively rare community in um, photography. As if you think about most communities of industry, like um, whether it's plumbing or, <laughs> or whatever the case may be, where a lot of people, I think, um, really interact very well, want to share a lot of knowledge, um, want to communicate. And the response you get when you are sharing and giving and teaching is pretty incredible. Um, I've had all kinds of exchanges with people later that turned into longer friendships and um, just more compelling interactions. And so there's a lot of reward in that, for me at least. And I know I'm not alone in that. You do quite a lot of that too. Yeah, and I, I find that when I'm teaching, I learn a lot as well. So it's, it's beneficial just uh, in a lot of different ways. Well, let's talk about your photography. You're a portrait photographer. Um, and you have a, a very unique style. So can you tell us how you approach portrait photography? Yeah, sure. Um, I am a big believer in um, really nailing down the technicals and um, paying a lot of attention to getting it right as best you can in camera. That being said, um, I certainly go for mood of my subjects probably over everything else, um, assuming I'm lighting everything else up. So a lot of my photography and style um, if, you know, kind of put some words to it is I care a lot about the exchange and the interaction um, and the, the look and feel of my subjects. Uh, I'm very much focused on people as, as a photographer, so obviously the portrait thing works out really well. Um, and although I have done um, a lot of uh, commercial work or editorial work or photography of products and such, um, it's just not nearly as engaging for me as photographing people. So. When I, when I hear feedback about the style, um, a lot of it has to do with the exchange I think that the viewer can have with the subject later where you can really see a lot of spark of life or expression or emotion. Yeah, and one of the things that you do so well is, is that interaction with your um, uh, subjects. But um, a lot of people that are trying to do that when they're just starting out or they've even been shooting for a while uh, are really concentrating a lot on the technical aspects of their camera, you know, shutter speed and aperture values and making sure their flash is all set right and those types of things. How do you get from the point where you're worried about your camera settings to the point where really your main focus is interacting with the subject? What are some of the guidelines you would have to get from A to B on that? Yeah, okay, I think that's a great question. Um, I put a lot of emphasis on uh, training in the first couple years of my business. My, if I had to think about what I was really caring a lot about. It was building a solid structure. Um, and uh, I, I had the understanding to build a solid structure for business, but it took a couple of years for me to really stop everything I was doing and go back and, and really lay down the foundation I needed for my business. But in that time, I studied the, the technicals you know, a lot. And not just, okay, what does ISO do? What does Aperture do? What does Shutter Speed do? But how do they work in harmony? What can I bring in to adjust the look and feel of my shots? And how can I just get this so second nature so they don't have to be here? And I liken it to um, listening to a concert pianist, for instance. Any time that they're thinking about what keys they're hitting, you are completely jolted out of that experience, the emotion of it. 
And I think it's the same thing with interaction. If you have got this to the point where you're not thinking about where the keys are and it's just so second nature to you with photography, then you can be completely engaged with your subject and get all kinds of expressions and emotions you're not going to get if you're just looking at your camera and checking the back of your LCD. Um, and so even though there are times while I'm in the middle of a shoot where I'm absolutely changing my settings often because I do shoot in manual mode, um, I'm doing so in a way that is consistently engaging with my subject and I think that if I were to break and treat these as separate activities, one is engagement and one is um, really paying attention to my camera, then I lose that momentum and that flow and my end result's not going to be nearly as impactful. Yeah, and I love that analogy of the concert pianist. Um, and I think like a concert pianist, if you ever want to get to that point where you're that proficient, you have to practice and practice and practice. And you never stop practicing. You have to practice every single day. Do you still find yourself uh, tweaking and learning and, and practicing even today? I, I absolutely am still practicing. And what you said earlier about um, learning as you teach, that's absolutely true because you can know something in theory. You can go out and practice and try it, but it's not until like, the nth time that it's actually part of your toolkit. And so I find that if I'm just sitting there um, photographing a family at the park, for instance, I'm going to be bored out of my mind if I'm using the exact same settings and I'm putting them in the exact same spots. And I, I have to shake it up and I've got to try new angles and perspectives and um, funky angles in terms of um, different widths of my, the lens I'm using and shallow depth of field or extended field of sharpness or anything. And, um, and I want to put challenging work in where I'm trying to shoot this whole thing at a, at a 2.0 for a family of five and get a place where I can actually do it, um, knowing that I get my safe shots, but I, but I have to keep playing, and a lot of that playing is with the technical specifications of the equipment, you know? Well, it's always interesting stuff. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the cameras and lenses and some of the technical things that you do use. So can you walk us through sort of what's in your camera bag on a normal uh, uh, portrait photography shoot? Um, yeah. I shoot with the, I shoot Canon, and I shoot the 5D Mark II, the 1D Mark II, which is officially now um, pretty much an ancient camera, it's about five years old, and the um, 24-70-2.8 lens, the 85-1.2, which is probably my personal favorite, um, and then the 35-1.4, those are the ones I, I use the most, of course I still use um, the 70-200 IS and the 16-35 millimeter as well. Well, you have a lot of lenses in your bag. If you had one lens to choose out of that camera bag, which, which lens would that be? If I had um, one lens to choose out of that camera bag, um, I, you know, if I had no idea what the situation is, I would grab the 2470 because it's kind of my catch-all workhorse. Um, if I knew for sure I was going into a single individual portrait session, I'd be grabbing the 85 too. All right, well, let's talk about something specific to your portrait photography, and that is your children's portrait photography. One thing that I have never been successful with is shooting kids. So tell us a little bit of how you approach uh, children's photography and make it look so good. The way I approach children's photography is very much focused on the personality of the children. And so I try to spend a lot of time thinking about who they are and um, I think a lot about personality typing. And again, I only have a couple hours with them, so all I have to really consider is how do I think this is going to go for the next two hours and how can I respond best to that. Um, and I find that putting a ton of attention on simply the relationship that I'm going to have and the interaction we're having. Um, and again, I've already, you know, I'm not thinking so much about the technicals because I, I feel like I already know what I'm doing. Um, the only other considerations I have, to, I have to have really is how to keep that exchange going and take photographs along the way. Awesome. So if you had um, somebody that was a brand new photographer and they've been shooting maybe portraits for a while and they wanted to start shooting children, are there some things that you would suggest that they do to learn how to have that interaction and be successful? Yeah, I would think if um, the, the thing to keep in mind with children is based on their age, they are either going to be or not going to be lens aware. And um, probably the first thing you can do as a new shooter is to evaluate what's happening. Is the child, um, if you know, a toddler for instance may have no consideration for the fact that you're holding a camera with a lens on it. Whereas a five-year-old may walk right up to you and give you that smile that they smile for every single shot that ever gets taken of them. And so by starting there, you know, as a, as a point to help you decide whether you're not going to go into focusing completely on getting them to ignore the camera so you can have a genuine exchange, 
Um, or are you going to go the other way and get them to be more aware of the camera so you can actually get them looking in the direction you want to get the shot you want? So that's where I would start when I think about interaction, first time shooter. Um, and again, if you're paying a lot of attention to the interaction, make it easy on yourself and start with a really simple place to shoot and um, just shoot in a very simple manner. Like don't try to trick it out too much and do a hundred different lens changes and all that sort of stuff. Just start with a basic setup and just kind of get better at better at thinking about how to have that exchange and shoot accordingly. That's awesome advice. Um, and I want to remind people that there is a lot that Tamara's talked about with shooting children on the Creative Live webinar she did. It's actually three days of stuff, so it's, it's hours and hours of content, so don't forget to check that out. Well, speaking of teaching, you actually have something that just came out. It's called Capturing Life Through Better Photography. Tell us a little bit about what that is and what people can expect from it. Yeah, that is basically um, kind of my end result answer to a question I've been asked for a number of years by people who just pick up a camera and they don't want to become a professional, they don't necessarily want to make a career out of this, but they want to be able to better photograph the, their lives that they're having, whether it's their kids or um, nights out with friends or at the sports game. And, um, and so they don't necessarily want a, a whole tutorial on every single breakdown as it comes to um, aperture and all the lenses out there. They're just saying, okay, I already have this. I don't want to spend a lot more money. How do I use it better? And that's how this product was created. I co-created it with Rex Ballard, who's the director of photography with Extreme Makeover Home Edition. Um, he brought in a lot of cinematography um, expertise in terms of setting up the looks and feels. And we created a DVD, a 100-page book, and a quick reference guide that also has an iPhone app complement to it. And that all literally re released this week. Um, it's for sale um, in a couple locations, including Adorama. And, um, and uh, yeah, we're really excited about it. It was a ton of work, way more work than I honestly imagined. <laughs> um, but we're really, really happy with the quality of the product. Yeah, and um, I can relate to that. I actually got a sneak peek of the DVD at PPE when uh, you were at the booth. So I saw some of this work. In fact, uh, that's when I met you and I saw this video and I thought, holy cow, who is this? Because this is beautiful and I was very jealous. I was instantly jealous of how amazing this DVD was. And so that's my first impression of you was this is really, really cool stuff. Um, and people could see that at your website. It's capturinglifebetter.com. Um, and it's also available uh, at Adorama. Well, um, Tamara, we are out of time. We could talk to you for hours, I'm sure, but uh, we have to limit it. So thank you so much for joining us here today. Thank you very much. I loved it. <laughs> awesome. Well, remember, you can see more of Tamara's work at um, looking at her website at, at uh, capturinglifebetter.com, or you can just go to tamralackey.com to see all kinds of stuff, her blog and the stuff that she has for photographers, as well as just visit the Adorama Learning Center because a lot of her photos and her DVDs and books can be featured there as well. So thank you so much for joining us this week. Remember, if you have somebody that you'd like to see on how they do that, please send your suggestions to me at askmark at adorama.com. Thanks again. I'll see you again next week. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue.